Christchurch. I want to say thank you to Christchurch for their music team and tech team for being here with me to be able to bring this service to you live in your homes. Um, it's been an emotional week, I'm sure, for many of us, uh, but it's an absolute privilege to be able to come now to worship God. Now, um, if we were at Lillington Free Church this morning, we would be fixing a sign to the cross that said, I-N-R-I. It means Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. And it reminds us that Jesus is always our King, even when he's upon the cross. This week, uh, Sarah reminded me of the example of Paul and Silas worshipping in prison in Acts 16. Maybe we feel that avoid, uh, advised or voluntary isolation is a bit prison-like for us today. But my prayer is that as we worship God, our hearts and our souls will be set free. So let's praise Him as we sing, He has made me glad. know that for many of you, um, entertaining kids at home is going to be a challenge over the coming days and weeks ahead. Um, and so what I'd like to do is, this, this is Mothering Sunday, and we want to uh, think of mothers who have cooked for us regularly. I'd like to give you a little exercise that perhaps you might like to do with your kids at home to make Mothering Sunday pancakes. Who said a pancake is only for Throw Tuesday, okay? We can have them all year round. So if we were making Mothering Sunday pancakes today, we would need to start with a bowl. And with this bowl, we would add about 300 grams of flour, I weighed it out earlier, so I can guarantee that this is 300 grams of flour. I would add just a tablespoon of baking powder. Yeah, indeed. And a tablespoon full of pasta. So this will give them their sweet texture. So that's self-raising flour, baking powder, and a tablespoon of pasta sugar. We mix all of that together, and we make a little bit of a well in the middle of our mixture 
where we would crack our two eggs. I'm not going to do that because I'm going to get mess all over my fingers and the rest of this is going to be a mess. So we would crack those into the middle of the bowl and we would stir the mixture together until it's a thick consistency and then add 300 ml of milk. I measured it this morning. There you go. Again, I'm not going to pour it in today. Then if you take that mixture, you let it rest for a moment, and you heat your frying pan up on the stove till it's reasonably warm, maybe a knob of butter in there and some oil. And then if you spoon some of the liquid on, you're looking to make pancakes around the size of, of, of that. Uh, and, and when uh, it's really hot, you should see bubbles coming up through the liquid. At that point, if you take your spatula and you flip your pancake, um, just let it cook more on the other side, and then press it down to make sure that no liquid is seeping out from the pancake. Your pancake will then be ready. If you take it off, pop it on a plate, pop it in your warming drawer until your other pancakes are made. And then look for your mum's favourite topping. So whether that's um, some bananas or Nutella. Anyone for banana and nut Nutella? Or, or lemon and sugar. Choose what you want to add to those pancakes and serve them up as a treat for yourselves this Mother's Day and this Mothering Sunday. And perhaps remember all those who cook for you on a regular basis and consider them and lift them and thank God for them and for all that they do in caring for us, our mums and our dads. Maybe later on in the day you can make a homemade mothering Sunday time for them. But we're going to continue now with worship here uh, with the hymn, the song, From Heaven You Came, Help Us Faith. I'm <laughs> 
Well, this is Mother and Sunday, and today we remember that it is not always easy to be a mother or to be mothered. So our prayers are going to reflect that. First, a prayer for mothers, then a prayer for those who struggle with their relationship to those who mothered them, and finally, a prayer for mothers caring for children at home. Gracious God, in her weakness, be mother's strength. In her moments of anxiety, be her peace. In her loneliness, be her constant companion. In her prayers, be her quick and intimate response. And in her anticipation of the future, be her certain hope. Amen. God of compassion, when mothers fail us, show us your faithfulness. In our past hurts and rejection, minister your healing acceptance. In our search for belonging, grant us the courage that comes from faith. In our creating a family, may your spirit bind us together and lead us into your deep and everlasting life. Amen. Merciful God, unite us to one another and to you. Help us to support our families, to comfort one another in a time of uncertainty, whether from a distance or close by. Fill us with your spirit of gentleness and peace. Thank you for the many times that you have forgiven us for our shortcomings, our slackiness. Help us to show each other your forgiveness and love. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to sing. God having the whole world in his hands. Thank <laughs> you. 
We are going to listen to our reading uh, from God's Word from chapter uh, 1 and 2 of Exodus, and then we're going to be thinking about uh, those words for a moment. Exodus chapter 1, verse 15. Then the king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, one of whom was named Shipra and the other Pua, when you serve as midwife to the Hebrew women and see them on the birthing stool, if it is a son, you shall kill him, but if it is a daughter, she shall live. The midwives feared God and did not do as the king of Egypt had commanded them. But let the male children live. So the king of Egypt called the midwives and said to them, Why have you done this and let the male children live? The midwives said to Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not like Egyptian women, for they are vigorous and they give birth before the midwife comes to them. So God dealt well with the midwives. And the people multiplied and grew very strong. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families. Then Pharaoh commanded all his people, Every son that is born to the Hebrews, you shall pass into the Nile, but you shall let every daughter live. Now a man from the house of Levi went and took as his wife a Levite woman, the woman conceived and bore a son, and when she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him for three months, when she could hide him no longer. She took for him a basket made of bulrushes and daubed it with bitumen and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reeds by the riverbank. And his sister stood at a distance to know what would be done to him. Now the daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river. One of the young women walked beside the river. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her servant woman to collect it. When she opened it, she saw the child and behold, the baby was crying. She took pity on him and said, This is one of the Hebrews. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go out and call a nurse from the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. So the girl went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child and nurse him for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed him. And when the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. She named him Moses, because she said, I drew him out of the water. May God bless the reading of his word to us this morning. Amen. Now let's uh, just sit for a moment and we're going to listen now. And I'm some of the emotions 
Lord God, would you speak to us through this? May our hearts and minds be alive to the voice of your Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen.
It is every mother's worst nightmare. A newborn babe goes missing the day after her birth. The hospital crib is empty and the babe is gone. This was the experience of Dawn Griffiths, whose daughter Alex was taken from St. Thomas's Hospital in South London by a woman pretending to be a nurse back in January 1990. For the 17 days that she was missing, she became the most famous child in the UK as a massive manhunt was carried out to locate the child. At the time, Dawn became so distressed, so fearful, she had to be sedated. In Exodus chapters 1 and 2, we read of that same fear, that same distress and horror that was happening then. I'm only just beginning to experience the joys and fears of fatherhood as Sarah and I anticipate our first child in August. But I cannot even imagine the trauma that mothers like Moses' mother, Jochebed, faced and went through. And yet, in all of Scripture, her name, Jochebed, is mentioned just twice. I think that's a testimony to the billions and millions of unmentioned or hardly mentioned mothers down the years who have borne their children's fortunes in their hearts and carried their burdens and loved them and worked for their prosperity and joy. You may think that this is a thankless task. But as you care for your little ones, you are nurturing and cradling the future that the Lord our God is putting into being. Motherhood is a tough calling. Not least in times like these, where many mothers are being asked to look after children whilst also working from home. Think of Jacobin trying to keep a three-month-old baby Moses hidden, let alone silent. However, perhaps the hardest part of mothering is the letting go, the waving goodbye to a child at the school gate for the first time, or even sending them off to university knowing that they are unlikely to come home to live with you as they once did. Or even like Jacobet, dropping a baby into a basket, into a river, not knowing how this story will end, not knowing what will happen. I think that perhaps the only thing that might help us as mothers, indeed as parents, indeed as a world, as we are faced with these kinds of fears and worries, might be to read the stories of the past like this one and to trust God, to pray and to have faith that God's plan is bigger than we can possibly comprehend. And that He has not abandoned us. In God, there is hope. Even as we may rest our children in baskets, leave them to Miriam to hide amongst the bulrushes. It's important, though, on this Mothering Sunday to remember not only the bravery and the faith of mothers, but also of all women in society. Check out clerks and teachers, nurses and doctors, midwives, the people that we are relying on today. Our readings remind us of the heroic action of the midwives who obeyed God rather than conspiring with a brutal and murderous regime propped up by slavery. They said no. 
who will not be a slave to fear. They showed us that women in the workplace deserve our respect, the same as those working in the home. I guess we all think of the many women serving today in the front line of our NHS. We thank God for their courage, their wisdom, and their efforts to ensure that the right decisions are made to the patients under their care. It isn't just a role or a job for many of these workers. It goes deeper than that. I believe that the heart it is a calling from God to minister and care for those in need. It also takes courage to face Pharaoh and to keep on doing what is right simply because it is the right thing to do. Knowing that the Lord sees everything. And great will be your reward. Now, perhaps you are wondering what happened to Dawn Griffiths and her daughter Alex. Well, people in the village of Burford in the Cotswolds called the police instance room to report their suspicions about a woman renting a room for her and her baby there. Local police confronted the woman at the door and went upstairs and found the baby Alex sleeping safe and well. She was returned to her mother for the significant trauma that she underwent. They were awarded a sum of £110,000, a life-changing amount that they put towards Alex's schooling. And just a few years ago, Alex made an appearance on Britain's Got Talent as a dancer. She had grown up to be a confident and independent young woman. When we press fast forward for a moment on the story of that baby Moses, we see that he grew up to be a great leader and deliverer of God's people, Israel. He led them through the Red Sea. He delivered them to the edge of the promised land. He met their every need with the Lord's strength. But great though Moses was, he told people to look forward to the coming of one who is greater still. In Deuteronomy 18, verse 15, Moses declares this to the people The Lord God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among the people. You must. Listen to him. And together with Christians around the world today, we believe that this is Jesus Christ, God's Messiah, our Savior. As a baby, he also had to flee the wrath of a violent king, only to return as an adult, as Savior and Deliverer, of his people, once and for all, from sin and death, from the greatest of enemies. This Jesus is the source of our hope today, that we are never defeated, because Jesus, whose cross we move towards through Lent, is our hope and the anchor for our souls. In these uncertain times, may you hold on to Him as I trust and pray that He is holding on to you. Amen. And could we sing that? song again, I'm no longer a slave to fear, and then we'll pray for our world, and then 
will say, Christ, my soul, the King of my life. Thank you. Let us pray. 
Lord God. At this time, we lift our eyes to you. We know that you love us and you hear the cries of your people. As you heard the cries of your people in Moses' day, and send them a deliverer. We pray for all those who are doing their very best to protect others from their loved ones, or to treat those who are sick around the world. We pray for the Prime Minister Boris Johnson and the Chief Medical Officer Professor Chris Whitty and the Chief Scientific Advisor Sir Patrick Ballance. For their staff and teams, Lord, would you guide them and give them wisdom that their decisions would be the right ones ones that help us as a nation to negotiate this current crisis. We pray for our world, that we would be united in the fight against this. We pray for medical researchers and drugs companies as they work together to deliver antivirals and vaccines we also pray for all key workers on the front line for your grace and your protection over them. Grant to all those who live alone your comfort and peace at this time. To all those who live with family members, resilience and protection for all sheltering in situation, a swift, a swift and a safe passage home. To all who are fighting illness, your healing and wholeness. In Jesus' name. Amen. We also pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Well, on Mothering Sunday, we would uh, have loved to have been delivering uh, these flowers to you with our best wishes. But I, I thank the Lindas who have been able to deliver many of them this week uh, to bring comfort and encouragement to you. I, I, I know that they have been an encouragement to me. But even if you didn't get a daffodil today, you look out into your gardens or into our parks, you will see hundreds, thousands, possibly even millions of these daffodils growing in the fields, a reminder of God's constant faithfulness and goodness to us. Let's take part and comfort in that. But now we're going to sing our final song. Praise my soul, the King of Heaven. <laughs>
It's a blessing today I offer this prayer from uh, the General Secretary of the United Reformed Church, the Reverend John Proctor. Lord Jesus, in the midst of a storm, you said, peace, be still. Bid our anxious fears subside. Sustain your church in faith, hope, and love. Bring our nation through this tumult. Grant wisdom to those with heavy responsibilities and healing and hope to those who are infected. Amen. The blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest and remain with each and every one of you.